is part of a theme about to break away. Leaders in the northern region of Tigray warn they'll stop recognizing the national government in the capital, Addis Ababa. It's the latest challenge to the federal system that stitches Ethiopia's 80-plus ethnic groups into a nation. This is Inside Story. Welcome to the program. I'm Hashim Ahalbarra in Doha. When Ethiopia's Prime Minister came to power two years ago, Abiy Ahmed promised an end to authoritarianism and the start of the transition to full democracy. But his plans have met resistance nowhere more than in Tigray, in the northern region where a recent election was held in defiance of the federal government. Tigrayan leaders warned that they'll stop recognizing the leadership in Addis Ababa. That's adding to fears that Ethiopia could break up as the Prime Minister deals with growing calls from other regions for more autonomy. The feud between the federal government in Addis Ababa and Tigray's regional leaders escalated last month when they went ahead with the elections for the Tigray parliament. It was an act of defiance against the federal leadership in the capital, which blamed the coronavirus emergency for postponing all elections. The region's governing party, the Tigray People's Liberation Front, accused Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed of halting the polls to stay in power. Until recently, the TPLF had been part of a coalition of ethnically based parties, each in control of their own region. They've since merged into Prime Minister Ahmed's Prosperity Party, but the TPLF refused to join, leaving it without influence in federal government. Mohamed Ado sets up our discussion from Nairobi in neighboring Kenya. The standoff between the Tigray region of northern Ethiopia and the government, the federal government in Addis Ababa, is deepening with the leadership of the region now threatening that they will stop recognizing the prime minister until he holds elections. The elections were slated for August, but the Prime Minister had postponed them, citing the coronavirus pandemic. He says he's committed to holding elections, but as yet has not given a date when these elections will be held. The Tigray region and its leadership have been a thorn in the flesh of the Prime Minister ever since he came to power in 2008. And uh, with the regional uh, leaders uh, who are the former ruling elite and members of the Tigray People's Liberation Front, which ruled Ethiopia for more almost 30 years, um, say that the Prime Minister has been carrying out swift reforms, rescinding some of the progress they have achieved in the almost three decades they have been in power. The Prime Minister on his part says that giving freedom to the people of Ethiopia was necessary and that he was not going to uh, remain hostage to the party. Of course, the TPLF has quit um, the ruling coalition. They have also uh, taken their members out of the government of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. They have been secluded in Mekele, the regional headquarters in the north. Uh, some of the leadership of the TPLF are being sought for crimes supposedly committed while in office and for all intents and purposes have cut ties with the government for almost the last two years. Uh, they are surrounded by the federal forces of Ethiopia, but the Ethiopian prime minister has categorically stated that he was not going to um, use military means uh, to resolve uh, the standoff between him and the leadership of that region. Of course, it's not just Tigray that has some issues with the Prime Minister of Ethiopia. Some other regions are also unhappy about his dispersal of the constituent parties of the former ruling party uh, or coalition, the EPRDF, the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic uh, Front. And they say that the creation of just one party to rule Ethiopia is an affront to the federalism system that was adopted in Ethiopia in the early 90s. Mohamed Ado, Al Jazeera, for Inside Story. Let's bring in our guests in Frankfurt, in Germany, Sedali Lema, editor in chief of the Addis Standard newspaper. And in Ethiopia's capital, William Davison, senior Ethiopia analyst at the International Crisis Group. Welcome to the program. Sedali, 
Is there any concern here that Ethiopia could break up? Well, it is um, a considerable concern, um, given that Tigray regional state is not budging down on its demands, and uh, the government in Tigray kept referring to the current situation as a potential recipe for Ethiopia's disintegration. Um, so it, it poses a serious um, concern. Um, it may not be a reality, but it is of a very concerning development. William, are the Tigray determined about the need to move forward, establish a state of their own, or do you think this is just an act of brinkmanship for more political pressure on the government? Well, um, we're certainly not at the stage yet um, where a, a push uh, for secession um, is a reality. Um, of course, uh, secession is actually legal under Ethiopia's constitution. So it, it is always there as a last resort for a regional state that is not happy with the federal government. Um, but instead, it is more, as you describe, it looks like an act of brinksmanship. Um, as Tadali said, um, the TPLF, the ruling party in Tigray, and the region is by no means backing down from its position. Um, it's actually calling the federal government illegitimate, as you know, saying that it will not uh, fully cooperate with the federal government and respect laws. So this seems to be pushing the federal government further into a corner. Um, and the action that the federal government takes in response may in turn elicit a response from Tigray, and we could be down um, you know, a, a, a a, a cycle of um, mm -hmm. deterioration here, which could eventually lead to conflict. Sedali, so the, the, the Tigray regional government went ahead with the regional elections and then said that it won't deal with the government and it threatened that it won't recognize or extend the mandates of the federal parliament and also the government and that from October the 5th, they won't recognize the legitimacy of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. That's, that's a serious threat to the federal establishment. It, it, it indeed is. Um, the, the, the more concerning issue is uh, the way the federal government kept on downplaying this. Um, I think their understanding of this is that there are a few disgruntled uh, members of the TPLF up in the north in Makali uh, making this outrageous demand. I do not think the federal government is taking this threat um, serious. The president has just delivered her opening speech at the joint parliament today, which uh, commences the beginning of the new working year for the incumbent. And Tigray region has further taken other measures uh, in which that they have announced today they are pulling off their representatives, both from the House of People's Representatives and the House of Federation, and also other elected offices, uh, like the Council of Ministers. They mm -hmm. don't have representatives there, but symbolically they say it so. And so I do not see Tigray regional state um, watering down its demands, uh, because that would mean they would have to overturn the elections that they have, in which more than 2.7 million Tigrayans have participated. You know, they would have to overturn recall that election if uh, if they needed to make any compromise uh, in the demands of the federal government or the federal government had to recognize that election All right. and in either way a, a middle ground had to be found but i do not see this coming from the federal government i do not see tigray watering down its demands All right. so this is where we are now and it truly is uh, a deadlock william ethnic divisions have been political fault lines for decades in Ethiopia. Whatever Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed does in, in the coming days would make significant impact on the uh, outlook of the nation. What do you think he can do to bridge the ethnic divide in Ethiopia? Well, I mean, yes, Ethiopia has many deep um, political problems. Um, some of them go back decades even centuries. So there's nothing that can be done in the short term to resolve those problems. Um, what we're seeing um, with regards to Tigray region um, and its dispute with the federal government is a, an argument over the constitution. Um, it's a dispute about the decision to delay the election. 
um, and both sides accusing the other of now lacking legal legitimacy. Mm -hmm. So this is clear indications of a federation that is facing the most extreme strains. And as you um, refer to, there are, always, there are also a number of other very serious political problems, notably in Oromia, um, where it's believed that the, um, that the federal government has lost a considerable amount of support mm -hmm. amongst Ethiopia's most populous regional state. What this all amounts to is a need for serious, concerted, comprehensive political negotiations in Ethiopia. Now, many actors acknowledge that. Um, many actors are pushing for that. But, you know, whether it's some hardline um, preconditions that have been set up by the, the Tigray government mm -hmm. for talks to occur, or whether it's the fact that some opposition leaders have recently been arrested, or whether it's doubts about the federal government's commitment to those types of negotiations, there are some serious obstacles in the way. But it is an absolute must that some form of inclusive, comprehensive political negotiations take place to address all of these outstanding issues. Sedali, the, the TPLF, which is the dominant political force in the Tigray region, says that it has been betrayed by the establishment in Addis Ababa and particularly by Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed because the political landscape has always been dominated by the ruling coalition, which is the uh, EPRDF. Now, they were somehow marginalized by the Prime Minister and the political influence started to wane and they said if we're going to lose the only option left for us is to move backwards towards our enclave and dictate our own terms well the, you know the, the the grievance this grievance from the tplf has its foundation from in my understanding from the way the prime minister has uh, has done the two major things one mm. is when he dismantled the EPRDF itself uh, to, to establish his own party, what is mm -hmm. called now the Prosperity Party. Uh, he, when he did that, TPLF was not in agreement with it. They said this was not what we have agreed, although establishing um, a single party out of the coalition was always in the corridor, in the agenda there. So they disagreed with, with that, and they, that's when they walked out of the, the new formation of the Prosperity Party. I think that this was preceded by another fault line, in my understanding, uh, when the Prime Minister began to single-handedly prosecute TPLF members for all the mistakes that were done in the last 27 years, mm -hmm. uh, in which the Prime Minister himself has apologized for the Ethiopian people in the parliament. But then soon after that, he started you know, prosecuting, his government started going after TPLF senior leadership and others were you know, untouched. So this has really caused some serious concerns, some serious grievances among the TPLF. And they never wanted to join the party that he established. So these two fault lines have exacerbated the, the, the disagreement between the federal government and the TPLF. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what led the TPLF to you know, flee altogether uh, and, and, and um, locate itself in, in Tigray, which has created a physical distance, other than also the political program distance or crack mm -hmm. between the two. So that created a significant strain in the relationship between the two today. William, the, by dismantling the EPRDF and establishing his own political party, the PP, the Prosperity Party, which he considers to be the, uh, the only option to bring the nation together, is the Prime Minister genuine about bringing the nation together, or do you think this is a political move to further consolidate his political clout? Um, no, I think that Prosperity Party um, was, in many ways, um, that, that, that type of move to replace the EPRDF coalition was necessary, because the EPRDF had had a very long rule. Um, it was widely accused of authoritarian practices, the TPLF was considered to be overly dominant within the EPRDF, and ultimately um, the EPRDF parties were fighting against each other at the end. So there was an absolute need to move on from the EPRDF, and I think that was the prime motivation for the creation of Prosperity Party. But you're absolutely right, there has also been a desire, understandably to some extent, from the Prime Minister to distance himself from the legacy of the EPRDF and the TPLF, 
and also to some extent the ethnic politics and the ethnic federation um, that characterized that era. Mm -hmm. um, now, moving ahead um, with the Prosperity Party, um, the, the problem has been that, you know, at the root of Ethiopia's political dysfunction are these disagreements about the type of federal system and particularly, you know, the degree of autonomy that regional states have and whether it's even correct in the first place for those regional states to have an ethnic character. Now, with the creation of Prosperity Party, many of the prime minister's opponents from the ethno-nationalist camp, they believe that this is the first step to undermining that ethnic basis to the regional states and their autonomy. Okay. And that's one of the main reasons that it's led to these you know, continuing chronic political problems that we see. Said Ali, the prime minister has been promoting uh, Midema, or the togetherness within the diversity of Ethiopia. It's quite fascinating that even in his bastion, like Oromia, he doesn't seem to be really selling that notion to the people, and he seems to be losing ground even among his own supporters. Uh, the, indeed, it is. Uh, I think the way the political trajectory today that is being uh, overseen by the, the prime minister has very little to do with the political philosophy that he passionately introduced to the Ethiopian people, you know, Mademer, as you say. Um, the way he established the Prosperity Party is, I think, at the root cause of the problems that he's facing even in Oromia, because what is happening with, with the organizational structure, if there is one, of the Prosperity Party today is the consolidation of power among the very few people. And, Chief among us, them is of course the prime minister. He is the president of the Prosperity Party, but he's also seen firing, for example, a central committee member, Lama Magersa, not on behalf of the Prosperity Party, but on behalf of the Prosperity Party's Oromia branch. This shows you that the party structure lacks coherence and that the prime minister does as he wishes to and there has not been any consent. It didn't even follow the procedures that were outlined on the Prosperity Party's mm -hmm. manifest. So this is an indication that power has been consolidated and is being consolidated among okay. the few. And the prime minister is in the, in the, in the uh, leading of this. So this has been very clear to the people in Oromia. It's very clear to the people in, anywhere else. Well. The South is the same. In southern nations, you know, there is, mm -hmm. no, uh, uh, there is no structure that's governing this house. What we see is the prime minister's wish to even undo an entire uh, zonal administration, okay. as we have seen in Olaita, you know. And so there has been that uh, kind of inconsistent organizational structure uh, being presided by the prime minister today. So this is at the root cause okay. of, uh, of uh, his, you know, uh, losing the grounds on both in Oromia in the south and elsewhere else. William, it's become extremely difficult to sell the notion of federalism in a place like Ethiopia with the rise of ethno-nationalist uh, activists, basically in all the major regions. Just to give you an example, the, while the Tigrayans, for example, are adamant about the need for self-determination in the future, the Oromo people, for example, the Oromo Democratic Party, has been advocating the notion of Oromia's special interest in Addis Ababa as their own stronghold when we know they are a minority there compared to the Amhara, uh, uh, to the Amhara. Isn't this conducive to further disintegration in the near future unless there is a miracle? Well, I yeah, just want to, to pick you up on something there. I mean, I, I don't think that um, the, the idea of a federal system has been discredited in Ethiopia. The alternative to that is some form of unitary structure. Mm -hmm. Now, that did not work in the past in Ethiopia. It led to civil war, and the federation was a creation of that. But of course, there is very strong opposition to the ethnic nature of the regional states and the degrees of autonomy, as we've discussed. But at the same time, pushing hard against that ethnic basis and that regional autonomy would also probably lead to some destabilization. So there is a serious, you know, there's a, there's a very tricky balancing act that needs to be found. Undoubtedly, there is also a problem with um, elements of ethnic nationalism, also with elements of the design of the federal system. And mm -hmm. as you correctly point to, the issue of Addis Ababa and what's described as Oromia's special interest in it um, is an outstanding issue. But that can be worked through, through legislative processes, through compromise, through some form of power sharing, revenue sharing, other mechanisms. But at the moment, we are not seeing 
that sort of consensual compromise politics. Instead, we're seeing lots of zero-sum politics. We have this fundamental divide mm -hmm. over the Federation that we also have these different competing ethno-nationalisms. The country needs to get past that All right. and starts looking for practical ways to address its problems. Let's see how, how, how to move forward. Said Ali, I mean, uh, ethnic nationalism is always driving a, a, a populist agenda. And the lesson people learned from the ethnic federalism in Yugoslavia is that the moment you have similar discontent, that could just degenerate into a full-blown civil war. What do you think sh uh, should Prime Minister do in the near future to stop this crisis? Do, does he have to tackle ethnicity or move forward and reform the constitution? Well, you know, Ethiopia is a country that has always been ethnically divided. Uh, this ethnic, uh, we, we simply throw this word around, but this, this concept of ethnic politics did not enter Ethiopia's, Ethiopia's body politics in the last 27 years. It has always been there. What is, what is highlighted in the last uh, 27 years is that regional state has their own uh, ethno-linguistic uh, boundaries now. You know, we have the, region, the creation of the regional states such as Oromia regional state or Amhara regional state. Going forward, we are at, at, at a political deadlock, obviously, and, um, and, and there are increasing calls for, for an inclusive national dialogue. There's a troubling aspect of understanding from the ruling party whenever this word is mentioned about a national dialogue in that they understood it in a way a power sharing arrangement. I do not think that parties are calling for that. Of course, there are parties that are calling for a transitional government. Mm -hmm. um, the TPLF itself is calling a national dialogue, uh, but also an establishment of a technocratic government, which is agreed upon by all stakeholders. But TPLF is also calling on the release of political prisoners. Mm -hmm because a national dialogue cannot be had, obviously, with key stakeholders behind bars. So this is the call. And an and extraordinary call was also made by the Patriarch of Ethiopian Orthodox Suado Church uh, in his address on the eve of massacre celebrations, where he clearly outlined for political elites to put their differences mm -hmm. aside and come in one room and negotiate and discuss. Okay. I don't think any other... Uh, way out of this in the, as we go ahead as well. Whether we want an ethnic federalism or whether we want a unitary system, this cannot be done without having an inclusive, okay. all-rounded dialogue with all stakeholders. And this is the only way out I see at the moment. William, I think it would be very naive to assume that you can tackle ethnic divide when the continent itself has been marked by the, by, by the ethnic divide and ethnicity it's 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 woven into the political social and cultural fabric of the uh, continent but what about building democratic institutions because this is where uh, abi ahmed has failed in a sense or another he came about with this vibrant call for genuine transparency and democracy still doesn't that does not seem to be the case well, yeah, what we've had, what we've had um, uh, yeah, during Abiy Ahmed's premiership is continuing political volatility, plenty of violent episodes. So that really hasn't allowed the space um, for any kind of significant democratic reforms to take place. Uh, we do still have, you know, very significant appointees in charge of democratic institutions, whether that's the Supreme Court, the Human Rights Commission, the Electoral Board. So there is still plenty of reason for hope. But at the root of Ethiopia's problems, as we've been discussing, is these fundamental political divides. So until the country, as Said Ali says, um, conducts some form of national dialogue to address the fundamental issues, as part of that dialogue sets the conditions to hold some form of free and fair election, then we are likely to have continuing political turbulence. Whilst we have that continuing political turbulence, the federal government will be firefighting. There will still be rivalry between regional states. There will be a host of other problems. And essentially, there will not be the space for that time of institutional um, development, the, the growth of autonomous institutions that the country needs. So really, the first, the, the first order problem is to sort out the politics and then address these deeper lying issues. It's a nation at a critical moment. Either calls for a politically inclusive dialogue that could diffuse the tension or bracing for more uncertainty. Sidali Lema, William Davison, I really appreciate your insight. Looking forward to talking to you in the near future.
Thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. For further discussion, go to our Facebook page, that's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story from me, Hashim Ahbara, and the entire team here in Doha. Bye for now.